What is up everybody, it's the Scientific Doctor, and if you're a zombie fan like me, you might be wondering, should I play Dead Island 2 or Dying Light? And that's what this video is about. First things first, I want to say there is going to be no video, so you don't have to watch this, you can just listen while you do other things, or actually research what I am actually talking about. I think that's way better than trying to edit and show you what I'm talking about at the same time. So, we're going to go into Dying Light first. Now, first things first, I wanted to say that I've been actually contemplating making this video for a while because I wanted to see more of both games before I got a good feel, but I think I'm at the point where I can kind of compare them and make my choice. First things first, we're going to go through Dying Light, we're going to go through positives and negatives, worries that I may have, and kind of like predict predictions as well. So, first things first, <laughs> positive about Dying Light is its release date. Uh, January 27th, I believe, unless it's getting delayed. Uh, but January 27th, it's a really nice time. Nothing else is really coming out. Uh, so it looks looks good. Dying Light seems to have chosen a nice day to come out. Second thing is lighting. Obviously, it's Dying Light. So they have to get the lighting right. And it seems that they have done a really good job with the lighting. I will give them that. Like the day and night cycles, you can really tell, and the nighttime gets really, really dark. So if you have like a flare or other types of light sources, overall it just looks really, really well put together with the lighting. Uh, the nighttime element, as I kind of said before, is really dark, and that's something I wanted in a zombie game is that it is really dark. Uh, coming along with other things other than lighting, because that is actually one big concept, the parkour. Everyone has been talking about the parkour. I really think it's a really good sell right there, is because zombie par parkour, it, it just sounds amazing. The way that you can just move about the zombies and just take them out and do all of this stuff, like jumping from a roof and kill them. All that stuff... I did in Dead Island doing what I could with what Dead Island 1 allowed, but now that the fact that they noticed people do that and put that as a core concept is really, really nice. That being said as well, they took out cars because they want your main mobility to be the parkour and mobility, which is really nice too. Instead of saying, oh, I could just take the car. No, I, I, I want a parkour, and that's kind of what I liked. It's like Mir It really looks like Mirror's Edge parkour, and that's something I really like as well. So, really looking, to forward, <laughs> looking forward to how that plays out. Now, those are kind of the big things I have, but there are other things that have positives and negatives to them. And that being said, parkour is not perfect. Uh, I will say the jump kick attack... Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this, uh, it's pretty well used in their trailers and gameplay videos and stuff, but the jump kick attack seems pretty overpowered. Uh, if you don't know what it is, he jumps and then kicks and then kind of lands like laying down on the floor. Um, now this seems like it could work. Uh, you kick them into traps like uh, spikes, uh, there is walls where there's spikes and you can kick them into the spikes and that seems okay. That's fine. But what I'm saying in general is you can just jump and kick them and they're away from you and you run away. You're done. Uh, that's something I don't like. So then again, there can be some balancing. But it seems like it launches them 10 feet, 20 feet, and it's because of that trap concept that you can kick them into the wall of spikes. And I think using it otherwise is just too overdone. Um, a negative and positive, again, is the zombie mode. That's something they're trying to sell for like pre-order, I don't know if it's pre-order only, but uh, it's one of their main selling points. I personally am against it, but I can see the positives in it. The reasons why I'm against it is the zombie kind of seems like in uh, Left 4 Dead 2, there's a zombie called the Hunter, and it's it's like on all fours and it jumps around and stuff like that, and it is basically that it's glowing purple for some reason, like UV lighting. Um, it's glowing purple and it hates light, but it's glowing UV light for some reason. Um, and it basically moves around like Spider-Man. It's player controlled and it, it's one of them, but it, it moves like Spider-Man and it looks really weird. It's kind of like how Call of Duty Ghosts aliens were, how garbage they were. 
Uh, it's kind of like that, and that turns me away. But then again, it can be fun, obviously, if you are doing that with friends. Uh, it's like invading your friends in Dark Souls or something like that. It can be fun, so I'm still looking for more on that. But as of right now, it kind of turned me away by it's not a real zombie. It's like a weird special zombie. Um, me, personally, I would say that the overall looks are a negative uh, per, it looks great, don't get me wrong, the environment looks great, but it's on the Chrome Engine 6. Now, the Chrome Engine 5, which ran Dead Island 1, as we all know, was not great. Chrome Engine 6, it's way better, I'll give it that, but to me, it's not up to the standards of what ne Next Gen can do. And their original gameplay that they showed, the characters, like, talking to receive a mission, I'll get to that in a second, um, but he was actually talking to them. They look more fluid when they're talking to you, but once again, it's the idea that the characters are really stiff, and the, the mouthing, you act in the mouth, and the mouth movements to actually pronounce a word, that's still stiff. It's just something that I'm turned away from Chrome Engine 6 for, and I think overall it hurts the game. I don't know if it would be better on a different engine, but that's just something that I am worried about, is that Chrome Engine 6 will be the downfall of this game. Uh, the environment, as I said before, it's really good, but I, it's not the best. I think it could be better. Uh, and going along with the environment, the location, I'm not sure if they've actually specified where it is, but the, I heard them saying that there's two main locations. One is like a city, and one is like a shanty town almost. And within there is different locations, but um, one of the good places is the sewers. Uh, if, if you guys ever played Dead Island Riptide, the sewers are amazing. They're extremely dark, so that's why Dying Light kind of attracts my attention. It's extremely dark, and the parkour seems really cool, and it's really atmospheric. But they're, in general, the places are not great. The city itself kind of looks like an Assassin's Creed city. So it's kind of, you're using parkour and stuff like that, like Ezio through a city, that's exactly what Ezio would do, but in first person. Um, just kind of turns me away there. And then the shanty town reminds me of Dead Island 1. So, kind of not liking the location idea. But I do like, however, the race for crate drop. It kind of works like GTA, is what I've seen. A uh, random crate drop with supplies will come in, and you got a race there. The worries I have is that it'll be like GTA and basically spawn or drop in right next to a different player instead of being kind of evenly distributed or in a location extremely far away from the map where it really does feel like a race. That's the kind of worries I have with that, but I do like the idea. One thing that I hate though is character customization. Personally, I don't like it. It takes away from a game. Another reason why I don't like it? You're in first person, so really the only things you're going to see are your hands, forearms, and your shins and your foot. So if you're having character customization as one of your main selling points, you're not getting much out of it because you're either going to be wearing a weird tuxedo or you're going to be wearing like a jester outfit, which in general takes away from the idea that they're going for a gripping, heartfelt story but you can dress yourself as a clown. That's just something that I'm turned away from. If you're going for a really heartfelt story where you feel emotions, and then you cut away to a guy wearing like pink short shorts, it's not going to be that effective. It's like in Dead Rising 2 where there's a super serious cutscene, and then you load back in as Chuck Green, and you're wearing like a snow cap and like a crop top. It's that idea. I don't like that idea. Another thing I will say about the character customization or the looks of people is the zombies. They look almost like Dead Island 1 villagers where they're wearing like tropical outfits, tropical shorts. It looks exactly like that and I'm turned away from that because I've seen enough zombies wearing weird Hawaiian clothing basically. And it's just something that I don't like and I, I need something fresh. Again, going along with the Chrome Engine thing, sorry if this is out of place, but the third person, 
doesn't look great. I don't mean third person as in you're playing in third person. I mean the third person as you're watching your co-op friend do something. I watched uh, the gameplay and he kind of does the moves. He does the swinging and stuff, but it, it looks really stiff, kind of like how Dead Island 1 looked, but a little bit smoother. As I say, Chrome Engine 6 does a little bit better, but it still seems really stiff. And with the jump drop kick kind of thing that he does to launch them, it just doesn't look good third person. Um, kind of what I said before with it being a problem in Dead Island 1, you know how when you got hit by, your friend got hit by a thug, it would delay your friend actually flying back? It kind of looks like that with the drop kick. When you actually kick them, there's like a that split second delay and it just doesn't work overall. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much, but I am going to move on to Dead Island 2 here. I have a lot more to say about Dead Island 2 because they've shown a lot more. There's been more interviews and a lot more people have been talking about how different it is. And how different it is, is location, location, location. It's a real location. Or locations. There's different cities within California that you can go into. Not just Hollywood. And that's something that I really like, is that it's a real location. But one worry I do have about it being a real location is that it might not be that accurate. But that being said, I enjoy the idea of it being a real location instead of something like Dead Island or Dying Light. I do appreciate the art style change. The the weird saturation and stuff is exactly what I needed in Dead Island. It just changing the art style made it look better in my opinion. Dead Island 1 went too far trying to be too real and it hurt the game. So this kind of going for this weird 3D cartoonic CG type game actually makes it look better. You can do a lot more with that instead of trying to be super super real. The looks of the zombies, they seem really unique. I've looked at all the gameplay, there's like 20 minutes of gameplay at least, and each zombie the clothing that they're wearing looks unique. The hairstyle looks a bit unique, and it looks really well. It doesn't look slapped together like some other zombies in uh, Dead Island 1. It looks pretty natural. It's kind of like the GTA, where you can just find civilians, and they're just they're pieced together, and it doesn't look bad. And that's kind of what it feels like here. And the thugs, they look way more fitting. Like, one of the thugs is like a huge fat cop, and it just fits. It doesn't seem out of place like the thugs in Dead Island 1 where there's just like this 8 foot tall giant guy with wearing swimsuit shorts. It just feels right. And how everything is pieced together. Another big plus is that Jaeger is making it. One thing about Jaeger is that they made good gun games. So the guns in the game are going to be vastly improved. And we have seen that through the gameplay trailer and actually looking at gameplay. And one thing about the guns is that it allows dual wielding for certain weapons. In the gameplay trailer you can see him holding a pistol in the left hand and like a crowbar in the other. And he's going to town. He hits them with a bullet and just stuns them and then goes in for the kill with the other weapon. And that's something that's really cool and I want to see more of that. And that being said, I kind of have speculation, so maybe there's a way to two-hand a weapon, like uh, Dark Souls does. Maybe you can change in between two-handing two a hammer, or one-handing a hammer. Something like that can be really useful in a game like this, to do more damage and stuff like that. Something that I really appreciate as well, is the missions. The way you pick up a mission is not the same as in Dead Island 1. In Dead Island 1, you have to talk to them and look at their terribly modeled face for five minutes while their mouth doesn't move, but somehow they're still speaking. In here, it looks really nice. The way you pick up a mission is like it's a random event type thing, and you walk by a place, and they'll ask you for help. It's not, it's not like you stop moving. You can still move around and stuff, and you can just straight up choose not to do it. And that's something I really appreciate. If you don't have time, and you're going to a different place, and you run past civilians, or something that say, hey, can you defend us for a quick second? 
you can just go no and just walk on. <laughs> That's something I appreciate as well. And going along with the idea of an event, there are events like in an interview they said that there can be a chopper crash with supplies and you race for it. Kind of like Dead Island, or Dying Light kind of said before that it's kind of like the GTA crate drop. It's kind of like that, but he said that there can be kind of PvP type actions in there. So maybe two people are racing for it and they both get there somewhat same time. It might be, all right, now fight. Fight for the supplies because there's only enough for one. And then you fight and whoever wins takes the supplies. That's something I really like and that's something that was nice in um, GTA as well is, oh no, this guy came in through chopper, this guy came in through car, and this guy is sniping from a mile away. It's just, the battle is real. And I hope that that's something that plays really well. I really enjoy the sandbox feel. They say they're not they're not going for what Dying Light is going for, the gripping story. They're, they might have one, sure. But they're really going for the idea that the reason why you're playing a game like this is to kill zombies. And going along with the killing of zombies, they have Dead Rising type weapons. And that's something that's amazing with Dead Island, and that's what I wanted. The Home Strike pre-order DLC weapon is a baseball bat with a bowling ball slapped on the end, and you just throw zombies 50 feet in the air. It's amazing. The ideas that they are doing are great. Another pre-order DLC weapon is the Weed Whacker, and what it is, it's a Weed Whacker with a ceiling fan on the end of it. So when you're spinning it, you're spinning a ceiling fan that cuts the heads off with the power of a weed whacker. Just these ideas mixed together in the form of Dead Island crafting and upgrading and modding, it could work really well. So hopefully it doesn't fall off with the ideas of customizations because we all know Dead Rising 2 had amazing customizations of just randomly slapping two things together and making it work. And it didn't fall off. So hopefully Dead Island 2's weapons don't fall off with how wacky they can be. One thing I really appreciate as well is the character types. Not necessarily the characters or the character looks. I'm not too worried about that because, once again, it's a first-person game. What I do like, though, is the character types. We all know in Dead Island 1 that based on what character you chose, that's what weapon you should be using. Sambi was the blunt weapons, Logan was a throwing knife, uh, Perno was the guns, and Zanmei was straight up blades. <laughs> um, and that kind of didn't work because all of the best weapons were blades. So if you were Zanmei, you would get really overpowered really quick. I don't know if you guys have seen my playthrough of 1 and Riptide, but I got really overpowered really fast. But that being said, maybe with these character types, it's not about the weapons. Hopefully. With Dark Souls 2, you build your character to use the weapon you want. And hopefully, choosing this type of class isn't necessarily about the weapons, but it's more about how you wanted to play the game. There's a Berserker, which is the firefighter, which you can actually see in this picture, who is probably going to be the stronger guy based on the fact that he has muscles. So, it might not mean that he's a melee, like blunt weapons, but maybe that means he can use the heavier weapons, not necessarily only blunt. That being said, maybe he can use actual environments, like he can pick up bigger explosives, like uh, the propane tanks and stuff. Maybe he can do that faster or better, certain things like that. A car door, maybe? <laughs> maybe he can do stuff like that. Or maybe he can actually be helpful in different missions, such as moving things, or helping you lift something. It's just, there's so many options that you can do with a character type instead of making the character be weapon specific. And that being said, the character trees, based on the weapon types, it just adds a lot more with how you make your character you instead of a basis that everyone has. And that's something that I really like. And in relation to what I was just blabbering on about, it's like Dark Souls. You pick your original class, 
and then based on how you upgrade and use the weapons that you can get in the game it makes your character unique because you've chosen that class to begin with you've upgraded a different way and you're using different weapons it's just there's three levels of how you can make your character unique now instead of one <laughs> so kind of rambling on about that but going on <laughs> with the things that I like is the gore uh, something that changed with the art style is how the blood looks and how the gore works and how the zombies work it just all works and you can see in some of the gameplay the character has a tree snipper I don't know the exact name of it but it's the thing that you it's on a pole it's kinda like a scythe but not really uh, it's a huge pole and it's got like a blade on the end that you would cut tree limbs down if they're not if they're invading space like if there's a branch 10 feet in the air you would just hold the stick up and cut it down and cut it off but he was using that and he straight up kicked the zombie on the ground and then immediately split it in half and that's something that is able to do thanks to this art style change it's kinda of going more cartoony so you can really go for the amazing finishers like cutting arms cutting heads just cutting them straight in half as I said before there's just a lot more options and the gore looks amazing. The curb stomp, just blood splatters, just everywhere. It's great. I love it. Now, there, it's not perfect. From what I've seen, there are some problems or worries that I do have. Mainly worries, mainly worries, but there is one thing that I would like to point out, and once again, it's that third person. Seeing your other friends playing, it's not the best. In, um... Dying Light, it is worse. It is way worse because uh, the Chrome Engine stiffness. But in here, it's it just is different, I guess I would say. But it's not bad at all. It is not bad at all. But it just feels weird. Uh, I don't know how to explain it exactly. Uh, it's kind of like in Dead Rising, almost. It's kind of that. Uh, now, Dead Rising was really, really good. But it's just seeing them like in Dark Souls it's the same idea it's they're doing the attacks but it just doesn't feel right even though it looks fine and everything it's just that idea uh, kind of rambling on I apologize but one thing I might have a problem with or I really worry about is the pace of the game are you going to level up too fast and then have like two cities to look over while you're max level and squeezing on through or is it going to be too slow and you're going to hit that one level that just makes you overpowered like that in a jiffy like if once you hit level 49 once you hit level 50 it just becomes easy I'm really worried about that and that being said like Dying Light is concentrating more on story and this really isn't so hopefully it's not forcing you to try and go forward in a game that isn't supposed to be about the story and hopefully the missions are actually up paced so let me give you an example I'm using Dark Souls a lot and I'll keep using it because it's a well-known fact that they do a good job with pacing and how things work so here's the idea if they do Dead Island 2 like they do Dark Souls area exploration it will be perfect first things first the area of exploration you could find unique items and going through there there's going to be zombies like normal enemies in Dark Souls 2 and hopefully the missions act like bosses hopefully and that's how it seemed to work with the gameplay that I've seen is you started the mission and a ton of zombies like a huge huge wave of zombies just all came in and all came in you gotta take them all out kinda of like Left 4 Dead 2 charger attacks and like just waves of zombies it looked like that and that's what I like about it so hopefully they keep doing that with a lot of missions and hopefully they do it with different types of zombies and different numbers so it doesn't feel like it's getting old kind of how destiny worked where they didn't combine any of the enemies and it just changed numbers so hopefully they do a lot more with how many zombies come and how the enemies actually come in and stuff like that 
So another worry that I said was that you can go and find your unique supplies and items but one thing I have a problem with or worry for is maybe you have to grind for those supplies. Maybe you have to do a Dead Island 1 and teleport out of an area and then fast travel back into the area just to reset the chests to look for weapons. Hopefully they don't have to do that because that just got old real quick. Now, there was an interview saying that low level characters and high level characters will not have a problem. It's going to scale to you. So if you're really high level and you're going to play with your friend who just bought the game, you're still going to find stuff for you, but it's not going to be like Dead Island 1 where playing with a max level guy will get you like thousands and thousands of dollars right away. In Dead Island 1, it was like you started off finding like 50 bucks, but if you were max level, you would find like $2,000 and the cash was shared. So if you're playing with a high level character, you can just give money that way. Kind of rambling on, but that being said, I... I I really hope that they get that low level high level thing right because it didn't work in Dead Island 1 and it ended up kind of taking away from the co-op. Now one thing I will say about Jaeger and their guns and how they're doing it is maybe guns might be too overpowered. There's a lot of options they can do because one you can mod the guns. You can actually do stuff with the guns like freeze guns, uh, fire guns and stuff like that which is awesome but hopefully they're not overpowered. Now, shotguns to the face, one-shot kill. Totally. Yes, I agree with that. But things like pistols and stuff should be used as more of a stumbling weapon, and that's why there's that dual wielding, is maybe, hey, you shoot them in the kneecap, they stumble, you bash their head in. It's kind of that idea. I hope they do it that way, except for, obviously, the shotguns, which can just straight-up blast the face off. Now, as I said before, you can actually mod the guns. Another one is... You can actually see in some pictures with that one blonde country girl that you can actually see in some pictures, but she hasn't really been shown in the game, is that she's holding a crossbow with a scope on it, and if you look closely, instead of there being a crossbow bolt, there is a straight-up saw disc, so, and you shoot it into the enemies. Kind of like um, Dead Space, how they use the ripper, and you just shoot the saw disc out and just decapitate and stuff like that. It works like that. So hopefully they don't go too OP, but it works and it looks fun and stuff like that. Now, as I said before, with the location, it might not look right, maybe. Who knows? Uh, it might not be accurate. Who knows? But that being said, I really hope they do well with the environment because I will always want it a real location. It makes it so much better that way. Now... A problem I do have, or a real big worry I have, is the AI. As I said before, the Chrome Engine 6, the AI looked okay. It looked better, like how the characters moved and stuff. But my worry for Dead Island 2 is not the AI and how everything looks. It's like the zombies' actions and how they notice you and aggro and stuff like that. In the gameplay demo, pre-alpha, whatever you want to call it, um, they were defending a spot. And the zombies spawn in, but they don't attack. They're they're spawned in and they're almost they're not T posed, but they're standing still, and they don't notice. They don't attack nothing, for like a group of ten zombies. So that can probably be easily fixed. But hopefully, there is no problem of that. But once I saw that, I got really worried that maybe some parts are broken. So a big sell. <laughs> as well with Dead Island 2 is that you can go in houses and scavenge for items. It's really good and really good. So one of my worries is that the world design will drop in quality the farther or the more you explore the game. Uh, they keep showing off like the Hollywood Hills street and that you can go in like five of the houses at least something like that and I'm worried that as you go out through the game you're not going to be able to explore houses anymore. You're not going to be able to explore a store and get supply. Like, I'm really worried that there, that's just going to be a thing only in the Hollywood Hills area or something like that. And once again, the only real um, negative right now is the release date. It's spring of 2015. It's not big. It's just you just got to wait a couple months. So actually, 
I am looking forward to Dead Island 2 coming out later so we can actually see what Dead Island or Dying Light has to offer and see if Dead Island 2 actually makes a notion and releases information saying, hey, we've done this as well and it's better. I really like that idea. Now, which one do you choose? Personally, I choose Dead Island 2. That being said, it's more my kind of game. I personally love the sandbox zombie game. That's why I like Dead Rising 2 a lot, is that you can go wherever you want, kill whatever you want, have like challenges with your friends to how many kills you can get. There is actually a kill count at the top right of your screen of how many zombies you've killed in that session in Dead Island 2. And that's something I really like. I really want to know this stuff. And that is more my kind of game. Now, that being said, it's not like I'm saying De Dying Light is not going to be good. I just have more hopes for Dead Island 2. And it's really captured my attention. And I look at all the stuff that's good for Dying Light. And then I look at all the bads. And I feel everything they're trying to sell me in Dying Light always has some sort of bad aspect. Like, the nighttime element, take for example, is probably their key selling point. And then you look at the idea that your friend can invade you at night, and he's basically purple Spider-Man teleportation guy that can kill you. There's just negatives to every big sell that they're trying to push. Like the parkour, as I said before, it might be broken to the point where you don't have to kill a zombie. Like, my biggest worry with the parkour is that it's going to make it so you're not killing the zombies, you're just jumping off of their heads and going around the zombies. You're not killing the zombies, you're getting around the zombies. That's my biggest problem. And there's just, all of the key selling points have huge negatives or might break the game. And that's something that Do Dead Island 1 did, is everything that they were pushing for ended up taking away from the game and making it not as good. And Dead Island 2, there's a lot less risks here. Like, sure, guns might be too overpowerful, but hey, you don't have to use them. And parkour, you have to use parkour. But the fact that you just, oh, I don't use the shotgun because I can kill them in one hit. Fine. You play how you want to play. I don't have to use a shotgun. Perfect. It's not that big of a deal compared to things like the zombie mode Spider-Man, basically. Anyway, rambling on once again, but me, personally, I'm looking forward to Dead Island 2. It has a lot to offer, and hopefully it pulls through. Hopefully both of the games pull through. I'm one of those guys where I hope both of these games do really well, because that sparks more games that are like it, and can improve it, and can really do well. Thank you guys for watching. This has been The Scientific Doctor, and I prescribe you to start a discussion down below in the comments section.